Hi everyone, greetings to you from um, Goma in Democratic Republic of the Congo. I've been here, I think, just on two weeks now, and um, yeah, it's been. Ooh, <laughs> you know, many things can happen in two weeks, um, but I appreciate you so much, um, President Avenue Community Church, and for the way you guys are praying for us and your long relationship with us. And even today, as I was thinking about that, we are so, so grateful. We do serious injustice to you by not thanking you enough. And um, But we remember in our prayers. We do pray, and we... Um, we, I just want to say thank you very much for so many deep, long-term relationships, for sending us your best. Um, ah, I mean, Kara is in Zimbabwe. I think she might be leaving very soon. And again, you know, as we send Kara to Zimbabwe and our heart is so deep in Zimbabwe, um, she faced a huge crisis. And God just knew he was perfect person for a perfect situation. As all of you know, we've been so sad with the loss of Uncle Sam, who's just been such a father to so many children. And, and what an appropriate way today, even as we're going to speak on Father's Day, to remember Uncle Sam with fond memories. Um, yeah, just had a huge impact on hundreds of children. Now, you know, if, if, if I speak to you in back, I always feel kind of intimidating. <laughs> and I've got to really focus to, to stay core to who I am. Um, I mean, there are so many incredible theologians and preachers in your church, in your community, of course. Tim have done such a great job uh, with Clinton to not just have a culture of really sound, deep theology, and you've influenced my life massively, massively. Um, but also you raised new people. Um, some of the sermons coming through from your sons. Um, just, just really, really good stuff. And of course, we see your families growing with uh, Leighton and Tamara. And yeah, we, we're very excited. God willing, I'll be able to see you maybe next year. Karen, I really trust God that we'll be able to come. So this morning, as um, we're going to speak about Father's Day, I'm just going to throw a, th a few things at you. Um, I want to start with the last prophecy in the Old Testament, and of course the first prophet in the New Testament. Um, and I, I refer to Malachi 4.6, where we will read, um, He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the uh, hearts of the children to their fathers. Or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. Last prophecy. 400 years silence. And then of course we read in Luke 1, 17. Um, I've got no printer or anything here in Goma, so I'm doing it the old, old way. Um, in Luke 1, 17. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. We see this massive um, focus on, on fathers and children right through the Bible. And you know, here in Goma, it's, it's so clear and so easy to see fatherless generation and, and the impact that it's having. Um, yesterday, in fact, I, I was in a place where I brought 30 young men together, all orphans due to the war. And, and it was so prophetic in a way because we played soccer and we had drama and we ate together and we prayed together and we shared God's word together. But at one stage there was um, a group of people, international NGO, Christians, pushing us away from where we were. And we had to go and find shelter in another place. And, and we ended up in an unfinished church building. You know, it was so prophetic because I stood there with all these young orphans and crying out, how, how do I show them the heart of the Father? Um, 
and it's it's like you know at the same time god is 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 saying to me you're standing in an unfinished church building which is prophetic about my church it's unfinished but in these times to focus again on that last prophecy and the first prophecy to bring the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. You know, in Goma it's very easy to see a fatherless generation in a physical way. In your country it's harder to see it playing out day to day. But it's so easy to see the fruit of the fatherless generation in Australia. To see just... Um, how young people are so desperate to fill that hole uh, because maybe their fathers were present but they were never there, really there to build that relationship with them. And um, they're looking for it in other places. And we judge them. Pornography, drugs, sexual relationships, wild living. But isn't uh, the bottom of it a cry for that relationship that they never had. I mean, that deep relationship with their fathers. So, as I thought about it, it took me back to the Lord's Prayer. And really, that's an angle I, I, I want to come in when I share with you a few minutes this morning. You know, power of prayer, and I, I'm speaking to fathers now. I'm a grandfather, and I'm telling you, I am praying not just for my children but for my grandchildren because as an old man now i know that's the only way that's the biggest gift we have as fathers and and we as we pray to our father our father we've got the incredible privilege to go intimate with him and to actually change his mind that's what prayer, how powerful prayer is. Prayer is not an informational uh, session where we tell God of all our problems and, and things we're concerned about our children. He knows. <laughs> That's not what prayer is. Prayer is building that relationship, is pouring your heart out to your Father and your Father encouraging you and speaking to you. It's not asking as much as it is surrendering. And you know, the more we do that with our Father in heaven, the more it rubs off on us and we can play that role to our children. Because we know how it feels to have a Father. We experience that intimate relationship with our own Father. And John 1.12, we know that God say. I want you to be my children. So he's got a desire to be a father. There must be something incredible about fatherhood that he desires to be a father. Now, here's the thing. God takes ultimate responsibility for his family. He doesn't give it to anybody else. And as fathers, in a generation, in a culture, where every role is questioned and cancelled and whatever you want to call it, the attack on fatherhood is unprecedented. And I want to say today clearly and unashamedly, <coughs> excuse me, God chose us to be fathers. And He gave us the ultimate responsibility to care for our families, not our wives, not the education system. Of course, we are one when we married. Of course, we flow together in our different gifts. But the ultimate responsibility belongs to you. Even to educate your child. If you go right back to the law and you look, God gave clear commandments to the father to take responsibility for their children. You know, I think so many men of fathers by title, but not by position. They are not standing in that position to become fathers. And our Heavenly Father has taken on that position. He has taken full responsibility for His children. 
because that is God's plan. And, and the incredible thing to us as fathers is this, that we have got somebody that, can, that we can role model. So fathers, I know how it feels. Yesterday, as I was preparing to speak to the orphans, orphan boys, about the heart of the father, I was, I'm just honest, I was in despair as I had images of how many times, times I failed my children. Many times I was a bad father. But that doesn't mean God is now cancelling me and saying, well, you can't be a father anymore. He's saying to me, come back to the root. That's what it means to be radical. Come back to the root. Dig into me. Become close to me. Hide under my feathers. I love praying psalms in the morning. I've chosen a number of psalms and I've prayed over and over every morning in those psalms. I, I remind myself, he who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I shall say for God, is my refuge, my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. That is a position I take as a child of God. And my children should have the privilege to take that position with me. And of course, it is my role as they grow up to introduce them to their ultimate father, their heavenly father. You know, many of us had fathers that failed us. I know some of your stories, you know some of my stories. And it's tough. But you know those fathers who failed us had fathers, had a, a father, and he never failed them. And so we, we've always got the privilege that even if our fathers failed us, and, and you know what I've learned out of that? 99% of fathers that failed children, it's because they were failed. They were so broken. They were so neglected. My own father was an orphan. He grew up by the age of 13, um, in a very cold place in South Africa, he had to go and sell vegetables at 4 o'clock in the morning for him to stay where he was. When he was 16, they sent him to the Second World War. Now, my dad failed me many times. But he, he was broken. By God's grace, he found his father before he died. So we need to grow. And when we were let down by our fathers, or even if we let our children down, it's not the end. There's healing. Jesus said, I've come to bring healing to you. I'm taking you back. One of the most beautiful scriptures that you will find around this is in John 20 verse 17, where Jesus said, I'm going back to my father and yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. My father and yours. We've been adopted legally. You've heard so many times I speak to you about that. Therefore, we have not received the spirit of slavery anymore that we should fear, but we've received the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testified to us, spirits, that we are children of God. And if children is, is of God and co-is with Christ. <laughs> That's beautiful. So, so when we were broken, when our parents were broken, there's a hope, there's a new life, there's a promise. We can be seated in the right place. Yes, I failed my children many times because I was growing out of my own brokenness. Even when I knew Christ, I, had to, I, I could remember the incredible pain I had. I had to learn to get healed and to grow. But my grandchildren will hardly believe the stories from my children because they see a grandpa that's healed, mostly. But now my children see my healing and it brings hope to them. Isn't it incredible how God is our Father? He has called us to be fathers. Whoa! 
<laughs> it's a huge responsibility, but a crazy privilege. And it's not just of our family, but it's also out on the fringes of society. Those who are so broken, and Peck, you've got such a reputation, how you bring those people in, and you show them the fatherhood, the heart of our Father. And Jesus said, I have come to show you the Father. I'm concluding with this. Of course Jesus came to die for our sins. Glory to God. Undeserved that no man should boast. Saved by faith and faith alone. Uh, by grace and grace alone with faith that's also been given to you. That no man can boast. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. But he did something at the same time. He introduced the Father to us. Abba. Father, the name that he cried out in the garden. You know why Jesus on the cross said, My God, my God, and not Abba Father? Because he became sin for us. That relationship wasn't there anymore. It was cut so that he could pay for your sin. But today, he's calling God Abba Father. And you've got the incredible privilege to call God Abba Father. And you've got a crazy privilege to prepare your children and other people's children and orphans and wherever you go to prepare their hearts for this incredible father who longs for his children to come home. Happy Father's Day.